Welcome back everybody for another video. So is Upwork a viable platform for data scientists and machine learning engineers to find contract and part-time work in 2020? Let's find out. But first, if you are new here, I am Dr. Phil Tabor. In 2012, I got my PhD in experimental condensed matter physics and probably went to work for Intel Corporation as a back-end dry edge process engineer. In 2015, I left to pursue my own ventures and have been doing consulting, freelancing, and contract work ever since. Really quick announcement is that my new course, Deep Q Learning from Paper to Code, is on sale for the next four days in honor of my 38th birthday. So if you want to learn how to turn deep learning papers into functional PyTorch code, then go ahead and click the link in the description to get it for $9.99. But enough shilling. Uh, the reason for this video is that I recently saw some content by a guy named Joshua Fluke, who I recently started watching. If you're not familiar with him, he is a fellow YouTuber that does content in the developer space. He talks about career development, basically uh, freelancing type stuff. And he made a video talking about uh, how Upwork is a steaming, flaming pile of garbage. Those aren't his words. Uh, it's kind of the vibe I get from the video. And I'm going to address some of the points he made because he makes many valid ones in this video, in his video. And I'm going to address them here. Some of them I agree with, some of which I do not. So let's start with what I agree with. He says that Upwork can revoke your membership at any time for any reason. And in fact, they don't even have to let you on the platform. I have many of my, I have many comments in my videos of people unable to get, you know, uh, Upwork profiles approved. So that is a real phenomenon. And he's absolutely correct. Upwork is under no obligation to allow you to use their platform. And they do and can terminate your account at any time for pretty much any reason, though there are only a handful of reasons for which they would do so. But nonetheless, uh, it is a rather tenuous kind of on ice sort of situation. And so using Upwork as a central pillar of your freelancing and or contracting consulting strategy is going to be a terrible mistake. And I highly recommend you do not do that. That said, is there a place for Upwork in your consulting business? Yes, I would argue there is. Now, Joshua, of course, disagrees and he raises some valid points. So let's address those one by one. So uh, he says that Upwork charges something like 60 cents per uh, job application, which he says is the hallmark of a scam. Well, this is partially true. So what is a scam? A scam is when someone is trying to get you to give them, give you their money in return for something that doesn't actually exist, right? You're ordering an iPad and they send you a brick in the mail. That's a scam. Uh, Upwork, uh, and indeed many job sites, not job sites, but there are many job listings for which uh, uh, they're, they charge application fees and there's no real job ever. It's just some scammer collecting your money and basically, you know, you send your money off into the void and you never see it again. That is certainly a scam. However, in Upwork's case, uh, it is not really a scam because there is a legitimate job at the other end. Of course, there's no guarantee you're going to get it or that your application will even be read. And so your 60 cents may very well be wasted. So it's most accurate to say that your money could be wasted and most likely will be wasted because let's face it, uh, you know, you're going to apply to a whole bunch of jobs and you're only going to get a handful of them. So uh, those 60 cents are going to go bye bye. But is that such a bad thing? So I have been on both sides of the Upwork fence. I have done both contract work for other people as well as hired contractors of my own. I've hired people for, you know, logo designs for other ventures. I've hired people for content creation, for uh, photo editing, a whole host of stuff. And I can say with absolute certainty that the vast majority of applications I get are total garbage. And they range uh, from the... Uh, people that did not actually read my app, uh, job posting to people that simply spam out the same proposal over and over and over again. Now that latter one is the worst sin. I can forgive someone not thoroughly reading my uh, job posting, but if they do not completely, but if they do not write at least a personalized uh, proposal, then that goes straight into the garbage. Now, of course, that 60 cent fee, while nominal, at least for us in the United States, uh, is going to at least make people think twice about sending out that identical proposal to 50 different jobs in the hope that some desperate client will click on it not knowing any better. So it helps improve the client experience, which, let's be frank, is Upwork's central goal. They exist to serve the clients, not the freelancers. And so this step is really great for the clients because it helps weed out people that are just going to spam out, you know, the same carbon copy proposal to a bunch of different jobs without tailoring it to the specific job. From the freelancer's perspective, that helps you as well, because as uh, a freelancer, you are 
uh, competing against all these people that spam out proposals, and that just increases the noise to signal ratio, right? Too much noise, not enough good signal. So you, it's harder for you to get noticed because the client's eyes just kind of glaze over, and you know they read through proposal after proposal, and they may miss yours in the malaise of reading a bunch of crappy cop. Uh, copy pasted proposals. So cutting down the number of those copy pasted and terrible proposals actually helps you because it increases the signal to noise ratio and so you're more likely to actually have your proposal read and you're going to be dealing with a much less frustrated client in the end. Now another point that Joshua raises is that Upwork and really all the platforms really discourage you from attempting to contact clients off the platform. Now this is a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, I'm not, you know, uh, I'm speaking in hypothetical terms here, but uh, you know, if I were contracting on there, you know, there would really be nothing preventing me from conversing with the client through Skype. And I don't think Upwork would really care about that so long as the contract is maintained on Upwork. Their platform, particularly for video calls, is terrible. Uh, it is not very reliable. It doesn't work really well on Linux. I run Ubuntu, and there would be many instances when I couldn't get in a uh, call with a client. And so I had to use Skype because, well, you know, what other option did I have? You certainly want to get on a video call with a client so they know who you are, right? They know that your uh, profile matches your face because that is a bit of a problem on the platform, uh, as well as helping to build rapport and helping you to sell more effectively. And so I never faced any negative repercussions over that, you know, and I never attempted to take clients off of the platform. Uh, he's phrases this in such a way that a, he views it as a negative. Now it can be a negative, but it actually helps to some extent. So why would it help? So uh, Upwork provides some level of payment protection. So as long as you submit work, if the client doesn't file a formal dispute with the quality of the work, in other words, if they don't formally request changes through a specific uh, avenue through their user interface, you know, they just type it in the chat and say, hey, can you fix this? If the changes they request are insane, if it amounts to a total rework of it, you don't have to do it because you've already submitted the work for approval. And as long as they haven't uh, used the proper channel, it defaults to you. So within two weeks, you get the money. That saved my bacon at one point when a guy tried to scam me out of 500 bucks. I did the labor, uh, did the work. He wasn't happy with it. And in hindsight, it wasn't the best work, uh, but he was totally unreasonable and uh, basically wanted a refund of all the money he had paid me prior when all of the work was already up on his website. You know, that's not how the internet works. You can't really take stuff back. So I said, you know, man, I'm not Walmart. Uh, pay me my money and then just buzz off. Well, he just ghosted me and then two weeks later I got the money anyway. And of course he left a negative review and there was no real negative consequences outside of that. So the payment protection is real. It does help you, at least in some limited instances. If you are attempting to get uh, money out of clients using something like PayPal or QuickBooks or other uh, accounting invoice software, uh, there's no real recourse if they don't pay you. Uh, my last gig, I had a client stiff me out of $1,000. They had attempted to take me off the Upwork platform. And, you know, the quality of the workplace had just kind of degraded. I didn't like it. And so I just ghosted. I said, I quit. Uh, they thought I was trying to angle for more money. I wasn't. I was serious. I was quitting. Uh, <clears throat> and they basically disregarded the last invoice I sent because they'd already taken the job off Upwork. You know, I already made around, you know, $15,000 off the gig. So I was like, well, whatever these guys seem relatively up and up, but boy, was I wrong. So uh, the, you know, the, the concept of taking work off of Upwork is a double-edged sword. Upwork provides some protections uh, in return for that 20% cut, then 10%, then 5% graduated uh, kind of tax scheme that they use. They do provide some protection in that, uh, for that money. So, you know, is that worth it to you? That's up to you. But I found in, in at least some instances, it did help me. And the other point he brings up is a race to the bottom in terms of pricing. Now, this is true and not true at the same time. So I worked for a person who was charging $200 an hour and getting it consistently on Upwork. So I was kind of not subcontracting, but the person was acting as an interim CTO and they were managing me as part of a team and charging the client a couple hundred dollars an hour on something like maybe 175 bucks an hour. But in looking at this person's profile, I could see that they had a history of making, you know, 150, 200 dollars an hour over an extended period of time. And so I know that making really totally decent money, you know, 150, 200 dollars an hour is pretty good, even if Upwork takes, you know, 20%. And believe me, it doesn't take long to get down to the 5% range when you're charging somebody 200 dollars an hour. So, you know, what is that, uh, you know, 190 
uh, $197 an hour. So that's really not too bad for a platform like Upwork. So it is possible to make real money on there if you provide real value. Now, the other caveat there is you have to be doing a task of high value. If you're just another PHP developer, then you're going to have a hard time making good money, right? Because you will be competing. Uh, if you're in the United States or Europe, you're going to be competing against people that are in India, Pakistan, who are going to do a fine job and do it for much, much less. You have to add additional value beyond the work uh, that the client can uh, assign real tangible monetary value to. Maybe you write better documentation, maybe you provide better education, maybe you write higher quality code, maybe you specialize in a certain type of work that only you uh, are really known for and so you can charge a premium for that. And that goes back to marketing yourself, something you should always be doing. So what is the ideal then for doing consulting work? Well, the ideal would be to be building in multiple avenues of leads for yourself. So uh, you could be doing posting of articles, you could be doing local networking, you could be doing other things to generate a name for yourself, competitions, things like Kaggle, uh, anything you can do to generate a name for yourself to bring inbound leads as well as to provide social proof that justifies your higher price tier. Upwork can certainly be a part of that. Uh, I would not make it the central part of your your plan because, as I've said, I've had negative experiences. They can cancel you at any time. They have canceled people. And the in general, the experience has only gone down over time, and I don't expect that trend to reverse anytime soon. But if you have a gap in your work and you're trying to hunt up other leads and you see a handful of jobs in Upwork you can apply for, why not do so, right? Money is money. You may not prefer the type of work, but any income in a pinch will do. So I think it is worthwhile to consider it as part of your consulting strategy, though not the central pillar of your consulting strategy. And this applies to Fiverr, applies to Freelancer. I've never used those platforms, but they suffer from the same limitations where they don't want you taking work off the platform and they own your profile and whatnot. So it really applies to them as well. So what about the... Uh, contract type work that he suggests in the video. You know, I think that's a great idea. It can often have the benefit that you work for a larger company that has more well-defined roles, a better management structure. You won't deal with some of the issues I've dealt with as a freelancer on Upwork. And so that is a totally viable strategy. And I highly recommend you watch the video to see his process for doing so. And the name of the game there is going to be having a strong resume and writing a good cover letter, uh, marketing yourself effectively, as well as volume. Uh, when I was applying for jobs after grad school, I applied for something like 50 jobs and it was like screaming into a vacuum. There was, you send out these applications and you never hear back. You never know why you weren't selected, right? You never know why you didn't get a call back. You just throw it out into the void and that is that. Now, in reality, many of these posts are for internal positions, but they have to put up something external so, so they can justify, oh, we couldn't find a good candidate, so we have to give it to this person internally. And in reality, they've created, so they've concocted a list of impossible demands that only this specific person within the company matches. And so you're never going to get the job, but you don't know that when you're applying. But nonetheless, it's good practice to go ahead and apply and get used to rejection because that is, you know, a skill in and of itself. But it's a highly viable route. Uh, don't let my negative talk here discourage you. Uh, it is, uh, it is, Probably a great route for those that like stability, but for those that like to do multiple different projects, perhaps in parallel, certainly in serial, then the more traditional routes of freelancing and, and consulting and contracting work is really going to be a viable career path in 2020. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, share your experiences with freelancing. If you've, if you've used Upwork, let me know how that went for you. I'd love to hear your horror stories or maybe your success stories on the platform. But leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell icon because I know only 14% of you are getting my notifications. And I'll see you in the next video.